Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jake at Kia Tag, and today we're back at again, breaking down the top five best decks in Clash Royale right now. And a huge shout out to all of you guys that have been using creator code SirTag to support the channel. All money made is going directly back into our editing process so we can upload on a daily basis while we take full-time college courses. Can't thank you guys enough for that, and I really do appreciate it. We're trying something else new on the channel today, so if you guys do enjoy it, make sure to sauce out a fat thumbs up on the video. If you aren't already, subscribe for more content just like this. Let's get right into the action and break down the top five best stacks. Number five. So coming in at number five is Goblin Giant Sparky Heal Spirit. The main way that you play this deck is either defend with the Sparky or slow roll it in the back and your opponent pressures the opposite lane. And then when they do that, you go and kite your opponent's units into your Sparky with the Goblin Giant, rage everything up, go in for a Heal Spirit to keep your minions and your Sparky alive, and you'll just take towers left and right. If you're ever lucky enough to play against another Golem, Giant, or Elixir Golem deck with the destructive capability of Sparky and the high damage of the Mini Pack and Musketeer, you pretty much automatically win. Let's go jump right into a game and show you guys how to assert dominance with Goblin Giant Sparky. So we got a game, we're jumping in with the Heal Spirit, and we're ready to show you guys why this is one of the top five best decks right now. So, its defensive capabilities are absurdly strong, but its offensive capabilities are actually where it's at, guys. This is one of the most aggressive and most obnoxious decks to play against, because you can 3 crown people as soon as they make one misplay. So, he's gonna go in for a minor, he doesn't even have anything with it, right? His bats are in the opposite lane, so I can kinda just slow roll a Sparky, be up Elixir, and then, this is where it happens, guys. You go in for a Goblin Giant, you rage everything up, you go in for Heal Spirit with your minions, and the great thing about this deck is you can make so many other substitutions. So if I didn't have minions and I wanted bats, I would put Dark Prince instead of the Heal Spirit. But since I have the Rage and I have Heal Spirit and minions, I feel like it's a little bit better because look at my minions. It's getting healed up. The bats, they just die Easy. in one hit. And obviously not really the same case when you've got minions that are more robust. The Heal Spirit makes them like as strong as a Mega Minion individually. And it's just, it's not fair. It's really not fair, guys. So... We take almost half of his tower, oh, we take more than half of his tower already out of the gate. We're gonna go and slow roll a Sparky again. And as I said before, if our opponent goes opposite lane, we can kind of just go in for a Goblin Giant if it's a big unit and we kite it. Otherwise, he wants to waste more Elixir than us and he goes in for like a Skeleton Barrel, which is already a negative Elixir trade against the Zap. But when he goes in for Miner as well that we don't have to respond to, he's giving us an extra three Elixir with the Miner, another one with the Skeleton Barrel, four Elixir trade every single time. We can go for a Heal Spirit so we keep the Sparky alive no matter what he drops, it's not going to die. So the Valkyrie is now something that I don't have to respond to. And honestly, the Sparky might still get a hit on the tower or something. No, I hit the Spear Goblins, but you know, that was ridiculously close, guys. It is not easy. Even if you got a bait cycle deck that you have so many cheap distractions for the Sparky, it's just, it's disgusting how much damage I can get. I can go in for a Musketeer and hit the Miner if he drops it in the inside corner as well, which I'm really looking forward to seeing. If we can mini pecker right on top of the miner, that's fine as well. I just want to make sure that the bats and the skeleton barrel don't get any damage. And because it's double elixir, these pushes become way more fearsome for us. Because he has to respond to the mini pekka. And then he also has to drop elixir on the other side too. So there's a lot coming at him, man. We can rage it up. We can go for our heal spirit now. And because we got zap, we can just zap the spear goblins or whatever he wants to drop the spark. He's locked onto the tower. <laughs> I do what I want when I want. Another really bad thing about Sparky, if you're playing against it, is, is it's impossible to reset it. When it locks on, you, even if you push it back with a log, it still hits the tower. I don't understand how that's still bugged, but they need to fix it. So if you guys really are playing this deck a lot, you'll see that interaction happen more than you would ever dream of. But when you're playing against it, it's a nightmare and you never want to see it work. So we're just able to go for a heal spirit. We would have taken out the other tower on the left-hand side if the game went on longer. We had Mini Pekka, we had Goblin Giant, we were about to rage it up, and this man was gonna get pummeled in three crowd. As you guys can see, Sparky Rage is an extremely easy, straightforward, and fun deck to play. But if you don't like the Rage, sub it out for the Fireball. You can substitute out the Heal Spirit for a Dark Prince, and you can sub out the Minions for Bats if you're playing against a lot of arrows. The deck is just extremely aggressive, fun to play, and easy. Number four. Coming in at number four is the new best giant miner deck in Clash Royale. This deck is so annoying to play against because it has such a fast cycle. And if your opponent is running a bait deck, you've got double small spell. You've got miner for their princesses or dark goblins. And of course, the newly buffed prince that just never seems to die when you have the tank with the miner and the giant and the skeleton dragons that just are incredibly overpowered. They do too much damage. And I think that they're probably gonna get a nerf in the next balance changes. So let's go jump straight into a game and assert dominance with this new meta giant prince skeleton dragon. 
Dragon deck. All right, guys, I'm so excited to show you guys why this deck is so incredibly strong. I'm going to go for a log here, and as you guys can see, we have Log, Skeleton, Zap. Could not be a better hand to kick open the game. And we always have a response for whatever my opponent's doing. I never feel uncomfortable feeling like, oh, I've got Rocket. What am I supposed to cycle here when my opponent spams me? So he's going in for a poison. He's overexerting himself, spending way too much elixir. Now he can slow roll a giant in the back. Usually, with this deck, as I said before, all your damage is going to be coming from your miners and your chip damage with skeletons and bats with your miners or princes after you counter push. But in this specific situation, when you're up a lot of elixir, don't be afraid to slow roll a giant in the back. It can work in both ways. Oppose the most giant double prince decks where you're slow rolling a prince in the back and you're trying to make a big push. This deck, you can actually reliably get chip damage with your miner. And as you guys see, he's got bats, but dude, you can't stop me. This is too much coming at you. I can get through your Inferno Tower. I can kind of laugh at your Inferno Tower and not even care about it because you know what? We just get directly on top of your tower with the miner. So if you guys are wondering, what is better, Giant Double Prince or a Giant Prince with Miner? I think the answer is pretty clear here, and this is why it's one of the best ones for me personally. So we're gonna go and Soul Roll another Giant in the back because we're up a lot, and if he wants to go off his lane, we just go for Skeletons on the Miner, and then we're chilling. Obviously, he doesn't have Miner in Cycle because he had to drop it on defense there, but uh, he's gonna probably go in for a Poison. We're just gonna go for Skeleton Dragons yet again. I would love to see a Poison on that. If not, you know what we could do is we could go in for a Prince plus Skeleton Dragon push in the left, and then I think that he's going to try to go for the Inferno Tower Valkyrie. And maybe, just maybe, we can get Bats and Miner on the right if we want to. But the Prince should connect, right? The Prince should connect to the Inferno Tower. We're not going to spend any extra elixir or overexert ourselves here because we're, we're kind of even. We're kind of even on both sides. It's not, it's not good for us to uh, get overzealous when we have a matchup advantage as this game goes on longer. Since we have Log and Zap, I can just zap the Bats every single time reliably. Force out of poison. And you, sir, are no good guy. And I just love it, man. You'll love to see it. If you're ever playing against another minor control deck with Inferno Tower or Bomb Tower, the Giant puts on so much pressure and it forces them to spend Elixir on defense with the Inferno Tower doing a 5 for 5 trade. But guess what? Your Giant's going to be tanking for the Miner while the Inferno Tower is chipping away on it. So ultimately, you're getting a free tank for a couple seconds for no reason. Same thing with Bomb Tower, but you're spending one more Elixir on them. So that's fine too. We're not really going in for Zap too often on top of the Inferno Tower because I'm trying to get my Bats... Uh, removed. I'm trying to remove those bats and I'm trying to get more damage with my miner. It's just better to do that opposed to trying to reset the Inferno Tower when you can't break through. It's impossible to break through these skeleton spam decks where he just consistently has some answer to distract our Prince. So it's better for us to just go in for the Inferno Tower play and uh, yeah, just have the, the giant at the river tank. He's going to Inferno Tower and he's probably going to go for a miner on the left-hand side. If he doesn't, then we can zap the Inferno Tower. Okay. Yeah, he tried to get us to go in for a zap on top of the Inferno Tower, but it didn't work out, man. He tried to pull the wool over our eyes. He's like, Jake, I know that you look at that Inferno Tower. You've seen that Inferno Tower, right? You want to zap it. I'm not looking at the cookie jar, dude. I know. I have my eyes set on the prize, and I'm not going to be distracted, okay? The Devil Diablo was tempting me with his smoldering Inferno Tower, but we didn't fall for the trap card, man. We went straight for the bats, and we had our priorities set on the prize. Number three. So the number three deck undoubtedly has to be another Skeleton Dragon deck because, man, Skeleton Dragon is busted. What can I tell you guys? You have Fireball Bait with the Three Musketeers, the Royal Hogs, and the Skeleton Dragons. If your opponent's got Poison or they try to splash damage out your bait cards, well, you've got Heal Spirit and that's not going to be a good time for your opponent. The Skeleton Dragons are a much better hunter. They are significantly better on offense. So whenever you defend with them and then counter pressure with the Bandit, that actually has capability of taking out your entire opponent's tower. So many times you're going to get your opponent to fireball or use their spells on the skeleton dragons then you can start three musketeers in the back split royal hogs and overwhelm them especially after the three musketeer buff this deck is actually incredibly overpowered so let's go jump straight into a game and show you guys how it works hey we got a game against unstoppable crl player from nova what is up i love this guy such a nice person let's see if we can assert dominance on him though so going back to this deck guys number one rule you got to play a little bit passive, make your opponent overcommit, then you counter push. So Skeleton Dragons, let's see if he fireballs them or spells them, because then we just cycle three Musketeers in the back and have a great time. He's going to have Mega Minion, he's going to Tornado. Doesn't really matter. Oh, we got the fireball from him. Unstoppable, you're not ready. You're not ready for this. So we start with three Musketeers in the back. He has no fireball or Tornado in cycle, but he does have them in his deck. We'll see if we can beat a CRL caliber player just because, you know, the Skeleton Dragons, they're very appealing fireball bait. 
We're going to go for our Rohogs in the left because he doesn't have Fireball. We're going to wait and see if he wants to log or Bard Barrel. Then we follow through with the Heal Spirit to heal up everything. The Musketeers are not going to take that much damage at all. Forcing out Skeletons and the Muskie on the right just went hard in the paint, guys. So, as you see, we're up a ton of damage. That was exactly what I was talking about in the deck intro. If your opponent fireballs on top of the Skeleton Dragons, they're going to face severe ramifications, even if they're one of the best players in the world. You can't really stop it. Three Musketeers are way better than they were before and really good on defense now because they load in faster. So, all around, this deck has just gotten like three or four buffs in a row, and it's kind of crazy. So, he's going to minor on defense. Definitely going to be running a Lava Hound deck from my understanding. So, we're going to go in for three Musketeers right now. We're going to cycle. Oh, okay. I thought it was going to be Lava Hound Miner. My bad, my bad. He's going to Fireball this for sure. So, we need to go for a Royal Ghost. And if he tries to Fireball that, what happens is we just go in for our Royal Hogs on the left. And uh, he still has to respond to the Skeleton Dragon too. So, or not the Skeleton Dragon, the Royal Ghost. So, we're going to go in for the Royal Hogs as quickly as possible. And Bar Barrel doesn't really matter. I don't want to go in for Royal Hogs right into that. We could go for a tennis ball here, and because we have that coming in, we're just going to queue up the Royal Hogs. Did it hurt? You bet it hurt. Force out an Ice Wizard at the river. <laughs> Dude, he couldn't actually have that thing connected to the tower because it would have just healed up all the Hogs, and I would have just won the game. So it's ridiculous how well this deck works. Uh, yet again, guys, I can just go in for the Skeleton Dragon, see if he wants to Fireball it. If he does, then... I mean, dude, you're just going to take too much damage. He knows that he can't, so he's not going to. He's too good for that. We're going to go and split our Royal Hogs, and he has to apply aggression on both sides. He's going to Fireball and Tornado everything together, and then take a massive amount of damage on the left. And then the Royal Ghost, of course, still stays alive. So the thing that we're going to do is we're going to go and split two of them on the right, because he's going to have to go in for his uh, Royal Giant. If he doesn't, he just doesn't take the tower. So he's going to be going and doing that real quick. We can go for an Ice Golem. He still is not in Fireball range for the tower, so he's going to have to go and drop more cards. And what we can do here is we can just go for our Royal Hogs on the left. Double Musketeers are locked on on the right, so he's going to be forced to Fireball, but the Royal Ghost is coming through. The Royal Hogs are also coming through, and that is going to be Tower. So GG to Unstoppable. He has Tornado Fireball, top CRL player, really good player, and just doesn't matter. As you guys can see, even if you play against something that seems like it would hard counter against a really good player, you're probably just going to win. And Unstoppable is a better player than me. I just want to throw that out there. This deck is just significantly better than the deck that he's playing. If you guys were wondering, yes, that was the real Unstoppable. Here he is. And yeah, 110 in the world. Really good player from CRL. Let's move on to the next one and show you guys the number two deck in Clash Route right now. Number two. Coming in hot at number two is Expo 2.9 Cycle. Because there's so many bait decks with the Skeleton Dragons and Magic Archers and Royal Hogs, as you guys have been seeing, it's really important to have Fireball in your deck. And there is no better deck with Fireball in a fast cycle than 2.9 Expo Cycle. With the one and two elixir cost cards of Skeletons, Ice Spirit, Log, and Ice Golem, you can always get back to your Fireball, and sometimes you can rattle off two of them in one defense. And with the most recent nerfs to Earthquake, you are gonna have a much better time playing Expo in the meta, because you're not gonna get hard countered every other game anymore. If there was ever a meta to run 2.9 Expo, I feel like this would definitely be it. Let's go jump right into a game and show you guys why it's number two on our list. So we got a game against Dylan and he doesn't know what destruction is about to happen to his tower. Dude, 2.9 is one of those decks so frustrating to play against, but it is so fun to play. So let's see if we get a fireball game. He's probably gonna have something fireball bait related. That's 99% of the meta. So generally we're gonna have a favorable matchup and that's what we like to see. So we're going to cycle all of our archers in the same lane. Because it could be Golem after we see that. Oh yeah, it's going to definitely be Golem. So we're going to go rush off his lane. Go in for an Expo because he just dropped too much. And he's got Balloon. All right, cool. So against Balloon, we're just going to go in for the Tesla. It's going to be able to go and kill the Balloon. And he's not going to be able to get anything besides the death damage on top of the Expo. Not on top of the Tesla. Because the Tesla is underground. It's Groundhog's Day, my dude. We can Ice Spirit out the river. Just get more chip and force out something if he wants to respond to that. There's no way he lumberjacks or does anything besides maybe skeletons. But yeah. Oh, wait. We could Ice Gold. <laughs> wait, what are you doing? You're cycling it into the Tesla? I I'm a wild one. What are you doing, man? You're wilding. You're insane, brother. So we're able to go in for a Tesla and Archers and Expo again because he cycled it into us. The, the imagination that I have is just not capable of wondering why people would ever do that to themselves. But yeah, Tesla is one of those cards that's really, really broken. If your opponent tries to go into it and it's at a sliver of HP, it's gonna make them pay. When I go for skeletons off to the side so then we get a little bit more chip damage and I don't have to go and cycle anything else on top of this, like I don't want a Tesla on that. If I had Tesla, he would have just expoed, or he would have went in for a balloon opposite land. I think that my opponent has the same win condition as me somehow. 
But yeah, that's what would have happened. So we know that he's probably gonna go in for a balloon with that. So we're just gonna go and cycle our archers. We're gonna get ready with a Tesla if we need to. Otherwise we ice cool him. Oh, you're gonna zap, all right. So we'll skeletons on top. We can expo if we need to, but we're just gonna shut down the lumberjack. Are you gonna balloon? Cause you get the rage. He's not doing it. He's not doing it one bit. He's not about that life. So we can fireball on top of the balloon here if we want. And then we shut it down. Oh, he's just gonna pack up. So he's gonna potentially freeze balloon here. We'll see. Let's Tesla here going for archers off to the side and fireball the other lane. So I wanna go ice cool him. Just so the Pekka locks onto that. If the Pekka dies, he's gonna lose the game. So, yeah. This is quite bad for him. This is quite horrendous. Because the baby dragon's gonna die. And then we go in for another expo. And then when he balloons, we go in for double Tesla. So this is how the deck works. You stack Teslas, you become a horrible human being, and you lose all morality. You, <laughs> I don't know what to say besides just be a, be a bad person, embrace the meme, and play expo. So yet again, he's going to try to go in for a baby dragon and have splash damage. And I guess it works out because he went in for a zap this time. But ultimately, guys, I can just go for Tesla to finish off the baby dragon expo in this lane. If he goes balloon opposite, he's just going to lose his tower to the expo. So he can't do that. He's going to have to go in for an ice wizard. <laughs> oh, dude, the ice wizard, it's not a good tag. Trust me, you're, you're wasting some elixir here, my dude. You are uh, definitely putting yourself in dire situations. So... I can go in for an expo here. He's not going to be able to kill the archers unless he goes in for a zap. He does go in for that zap. We can go in for another uh, Tesla, and then we can go in for skeletons to finish off the uh, P.E.K.K.A. Definitely want to go for an Ice Spirit so then we can reset the Lumberjack. If we're able to do that and keep the Tesla alive, the game is over. So it's going to freeze. I know I've said the game is over like five times, but now he's saying GG. So it's, his fate is definitely sealed. He is sent to the Shadow Realm, and uh, GG, well played. Eight wins into a grand challenge, as you guys can see. Doesn't really matter what I play against with this deck. If they've got Freeze to perpetually reset and stop my expert from connect, he's just delaying the inevitable and the game will be over. So GG and well played to Dylan. I'm sorry that we had to traumatize you with the 2.9 expo cycle. It's really not fun to play against in the slightest and I understand that on a spiritual level. Let's move on to the next one and show you guys the best deck in Clash Royale right now. And finally, number one. Last but not least, Prince Graveyard Control is the number one deck in Clash Royale right now. You have three ways of going in for reliable graveyard pushes with the Prince, Ice Golem, and Goblin Cage Brawler. And you're gonna have the Mega Minion and the Electro Wizard for reliable air defenses. And on top of that, you're gonna be able to pull units to the opposite lane with Ice Golem, pull units to the middle with the Goblin Cage, knock things back with the Log, and stun with the Electro Wizard. So your opponent's units will be perpetually distracted and they'll never get on top of your tower. As long as you prioritize defending, it is so easy to punish your opponents when they overcommit. So let's go jump straight into a game and show you guys why Graveyard Prince Control is the number one best deck in Clash Royale. I know I should feel bad about playing this deck, but I can't stop smiling, guys. It's one of my favorite things to play just because it's so incredibly easy. Bruh. You know what? I said that you never go in for graveyards in single elixir, but this is the one exception. When someone goes in for a goal in the back first play and you don't have a prince, Generally pretty good for you to just do that. Go in for a graveyard in the opposite lane, force out a ton of elixir, go in for your goblin cage, and defend easily. So I'm gonna eat that like a snack, it doesn't matter. We go for Mega Minion on top of the baby dragon, the baby dragon falls, goblin cage is gonna just be able to shut down the golem, and we dismantle his push. We've got goblin cage brawler, we've got Mega Minion, and we've got Electro Wizard alive, and all he gets is golem death damage. You're not scary, not even a little. In all honesty, 1,000 HP off of his left-hand side, actually 1,200 HP, and he only gets 500 on both sides, that doesn't actually bode very well for him. He wants to get collective damage and tower trade a graveyard player. You don't want to just do a little bit of chip damage here and there, my dude. Also, since we know he's got lightning, this is one matchup that, because he doesn't have any bait cards, we just go in for graveyard and ice cool as many times as we want, and we collect the free chip damage. Maybe he goes Night Witch, and if he wants to go Night Witch, then it's going to go way far ahead of his golem, and he's gonna have a tough time. I could poison that if I really want to, but I'm waiting to see if he wants to drop more cards than just that. Sometimes they will, and it'll be way better for us then. Otherwise, we're just gonna go in for a Prince here. We'll go in for a Mega Minion. I didn't really want to poison because obviously, as you guys can see, the Prince is gonna be able to kill the Goblin Cage Brawler. It's gonna bait out more Elixir. A couple with the Mega Minion will still be able to eviscerate all the bats. So don't poison when you know that you're gonna take the tower anyway against the Night Witch user. So yeah, it's hilarious how the one game where I wouldn't just be waiting around the entire time is this one, the one game that we play, right? We're able to go for a Goblin Cage and go and kite and pull that really far away. And then we'll also show you, hey, Electro Wizard really far away. So then he's gonna be able to pick which one does he wanna lightning? 
Do you light me in the goblin cage or do you light me in the electro wizard? Oh, you're going to tornado it and then you're going to probably try to lightning later. Doesn't really matter. You're not going to have elixir for the lightning for quite a while. And we can mega minion on top of the dragons. One of the best things about this deck and why I feel so comfortable playing against it is, man, it's like most control decks don't have mega minion anymore because baby dragon got a nerf. And a lot of people are running skeleton dragons and electro dragons with their elixir golem decks. With mega minion, that is the hard counter to all their dragons because it's a three elixir cost card. It has really high damage and it can be dropped immediately on top of it as a melee thing. It's like a mini P.E.K.K.A. in, in the air. That's the way that I like to look at it. So if uh, you want to look at it that way, highly encourage you guys to pick up this graveyard deck in particular if you hate losing against beatdown decks because it's just not possible. <laughs> it's really easy. Goblin Cage is broken against Lightning as well because it's just your opponent will not be able to hit everything that they want with it anymore. If you spread out the Goblin Cage, they're like, oh, I need to wait for the Goblin Cage to get close because after I kill it, there's something that spawns and the Ledger Wizard is really far away, so I need a Tornado or I need to wait. And by that time, they just lose their entire Golem push. And that's actually where we're going to end today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to sauce out a fat thumbs up on the video. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Thanks for watching. Thanks for chilling with me. I'll see you guys in the next one and peace out.